This program is a simulated exercise. We want to welcome you to We Were Warned, Cyber Shockwave. I'm Wolf Blitzer. What you're about to see is not real, but the threat is very real indeed. You're about to get an unprecedented look at how the U.S. government would deal with a massive cyber shockwave. The Bipartisan Policy Center has developed a cyber war game scenario. The center has brought together a bipartisan group of former administration and national security officials to play the role of cabinet members. They'll simulate the White House Situation Room reacting to a cyber attack in real time. As the War Room exercise begins, news of a crisis is starting to unfold. Welcome back to GNN's coverage of a developing story that is affecting millions of Americans. Two and a half months ago, a gaping security vulnerability in the operating systems of this nation's smartphones was exploited by the now infamous March Madness application, an application that was purchased and downloaded by over five million smartphone users. As viewers of this program certainly know, this resulted in the largest case of identity theft in history, and the theft of tens of millions of dollars from the American public. Now, federal government and industry officials believe this same application is shutting down the nation's cellular phone network. Up to 20 million and counting of the nation's cell phones have stopped working so far today in what officials claim is the largest communications crisis in the cell phone era. So what's going on here? Are we under some kind of attack? what's being done to stop it, and how many more people are going to lose their service. To help us sort through these questions and more, we have with us Joe Franklin. Mr. Franklin is an expert on Internet security who acts as a security consultant to many of the nation's telecommunications providers, as well as a GNN special contributor on technology and cybercrime. Joe, what's the latest? Well, thank you for having me today, Simon. This is, in the industry, what we call a bot attack. Simply put, what's happening is, buried in the March Madness application, which many downloaded thinking it was a legitimate application, is malicious software. Once loaded on a smartphone, this software will rip through the entire directory, that's the phone list in someone's phone, uh, smartphone, and it will then start to send that virus, that malware, that malicious software, to every person that's in that directory. And of course, that then multiplies itself again, because once having received it, as soon as it's opened, that malicious software takes over the next phone, and it sends it to that entire directory. So I would not be surprised if this number jumps well beyond the 20 million already affected, because this is sort of like too many people trying to get onto a, or off of a highway at exactly the same time. The arteries simply clog up. Was this a deliberate effort to derail a critical component of the U.S. economy, Joe? I understand that the video component of the messages may have some significance. Well, I mean, to the extent that the video clips contained the shots of uh, the, the uh, Red Army, uh, there is suspicion that it could well have originated in, in some part of Russia. We've seen attacks from Russia as well as China before, so that would not be uncommon. But I think it's premature to make that claim now uh, it'll take some time before they can trace this all back uh, to its origin. One other concern I might add before, uh, before we finish, and that is that the, the nature of this traffic, being a video clip which is digital data, makes several of us very concerned that this attack could very well spread to the Internet and further could clog up the basic telephone system in the United States, that is the landline phones. So, to summarize, a growing number of the nation's cell phones are being disabled as a significant cyber attack takes its toll on U.S. communications infrastructure. No one seems to know at the moment how many phones will be affected, how to stop the attack, or what is going to happen next. The president has called a meeting of the National Security Council as the nation's telecom providers search for an answer to what appears to be a snowballing problem. Stay tuned to GNN for continuing coverage throughout the day. Uh, well, I want to thank uh, each of you for attending this National Security Council meeting on short notice. 
As I know you're all well aware, this smartphone botnet attack that we're currently experiencing represents a serious problem that has the potential to become even more serious as time goes on. We need to know how to deal with this, but we also need to think about what this means in terms of our implementation of a strategy that will prevent this from happening in the future. The President is scheduled to give a press conference in a little over an hour. He expects to be asked about this attack, and I think that's a reasonable expectation. Uh, he's provided me with a set of three specific questions he would like uh, the NSC to consider so that I can get back to him before the press conference in about an hour. First, the President wants to know how bad the situation is likely to get and what we are doing to get our telecommunications system back to normal as quickly as possible. Second, the President wants to know who did this and why they did it and what his options are for a response, both in the short term and in the long term and how we can prevent this from happening again. And finally, the President needs to know what he can say in the press conference to calm the public and reassure them that we are taking vigorous action to deal with this problem as it unfolds. I'm going to go around quickly and just ask for your reactions in terms of how bad you think this is going to get. Please bear in mind I've got to get back to the President in about an hour, so let's be brief and to the point. And let me start with the Secretary of Homeland Security, since your department has the lead for the critical infrastructure in the U.S. Secretary Chertoff, I'll, I'll tell you that given the nascent capability inside the Department of Homeland Security, I have com real confidence in, in CERT. But it, even at this point, I think we're going to be quickly overwhelmed and need the assistance of NSA, and I'd ask the Secretary of Defense for help. Well, Mr. Secretary, from the Department of Defense standpoint, I know NSA has a terrific capability. Uh, as a national security agency to bring its tools to the fight. What can you do and what do you see coming up? Uh, we're in contact with Homeland Security with the Secretary and we already have uh, the National Security Agency working this. Uh, it's, they've had some indications earlier uh, on so they've been working it already but uh, as of now we have no indication of where it's from. We're working it hard and we'll get back to you as soon as we find out. Now, I'd like to ask Secretary of State um, uh, Secretary of State Negroponte, are we the only ones experiencing this? Or are we getting any kind of uh, reaction or information from uh, other well, countries around the world? Well, we're already checking our worldwide telegraph system with uh, 300 uh, diplomatic establishments, embassies, and consulates around the world. Everything is in good order as of uh, just before I came uh, to this meeting. I think it's terribly important that we not engage in uh, speculation about uh, a possible foreign source for this attack until, uh, unless and until uh, we receive some solid information in that regard. I certainly don't think the fact that we have a video of the Red Army uh, marching up and down Red Square uh, can be uh, taken one way or another in that regard. I just got a note saying that reports are coming in from all over the world indicating that the effects of this attack are not limited to users in the United States and that there have been uh, occurrences in Japan, some of the Scandinavian countries where the use of smartphones for financial transactions is more widespread than here in the U.S. Uh, so uh, the current information does indeed suggest that telecom outages are spreading rapidly in many countries. Coming up, computers across the country threatened. We have a serious problem, but it's one that could get a lot worse if we can't cut this off from spreading into the internet. This smartphone botnet attack that we're currently experiencing represents a serious problem that has the potential to become even more serious. I, I've just been handed a note which I should read to you. I have not read this yet myself. Um, instances of identity theft and online financial fraud have increased dramatically that you, that you know. Yeah, talking about significant losses in the, uh, in the financial se sector, uh, marked increase in uh, customer service problems, credit scores of infected users have plummeted. I mean, right there, you can see how that would uh, have a dramatic negative effect. And uh, telecommunications carriers and mobile device mm -hmm. manufacturers each noted significant financial losses due to consumer anger and distrust, mm -hmm. uh, and this will exacerbate it. So, we have a serious problem, but it's one that could get a lot worse if we can't cut, cut this off from spreading into the, into the Internet. From the uh, DOD perspective, we're, we have policies we've had in place and defensive mechanisms that we've had in place before have been fairly effective so far. We haven't seen any indication that our classified systems have been uh, 
tampered with. Uh, the nuclear command and control system is still up and running. We've got Cyber Command working on, again, through DHS coordination, uh, looking for the, the source. So thus far, uh, militarily, we're not affected. And I think our national security in that respect is in good shape. 